This is a city of challenge from Troy Hackme called Hacker vs Hacker. So in the city of there is some other hacker who has already hacked the system and our job is to find out how by hacking into it again. So let's hop into it. First I'm going to connect to Troy Hackme network with my open VPN. So now we are connected. The first step is going to be reconnaissance. So we're going to do a quick nmap scan on the given IP address with the hyphen sv command which will tell us the version and the services that are running on this IP and hyphen sc to run some default nmap scripts. While this tool is scanning the IP address, let's check out the IP in the browser as if it has a web service running on it. Oh, it's a Knight's website. Let's scroll down a little bit and here we can see a functionality through which we can upload files. Well, that's an interesting functionality. I know what you guys are thinking. I'm thinking the same thing. But first up, I'm going to launch my burp suit to capture HTTP request from this website. Now let's see if the nmap scan is complete. And yes it is. It shows that port 22 is open and is running SSH service. And it also shows that the operating system is Linux. Okay, that's cool. Let's go back to the website. I'm going to use this file upload functionality just like a normal user. So I'm going to browse and select a file. Let's say this flag.txt file and I'm going to turn on my burp proxy and the intercept is on. Let's capture this request. So now we have this request upload.php. Let's send this to repeater. Forward this request and it says that hacked. If you don't want me to upload my shell, do better at filtering. Now let's send the request from repeater. And in the response, we can see some PHP code along with the text message that were displayed on the web page. Let's understand what this code is actually doing. So there, it's a target dir variable, and I think it basically sends all the uploaded files to the CVS directory. And this statement checks if the file uploaded has PDF extension in it. And then it also checks if a particular file has been uploaded already. And if all the criteria is matched, then it will upload the file. Otherwise, it will throw a message, something went wrong. Let's go back to the browser and move to the CVS directory. And it says directory listing disabled. Now let's see that PHP code again. So I think the hacker was able to hack into the website by exploiting this functionality, file upload functionality. So she might have uploaded a malicious PHP script by bypassing this check, which gave her a reverse shell. So what's happening over here is this PHP code is only checking if .pdf is present in the name of the file. This can be easily bypassed. For example, using a file like file.pdf.php instead of file.pdf. So I'm assuming this was the bypass, so let's test this out and upload our own malicious PHP script. As we already know, all the user uploaded files were uploaded in the CVS directory. So let's fuzz this with the help of fuff tool to find any malicious or interesting files. So I'm going to use a word list from seclist and provide the URL. Yeah. 
Now we just have to wait for a while. And we got it. This word shell is giving us 200 status code. So let's check this out. I'm going to capture this request in burp. And we do get a response. So let's show this up in browser. I'm going to stop the fuzzing process now and clear my screen up. And this time we are going to fuzz for parameters. As we don't know what parameter that shell might be using to execute commands. And after waiting for a while, we got one hit, CMD. So let's see if it works. And yeah, it does. It shows us the ID of the user. And with the help of ls command, we can list some files in here. Well, it does work, but we need a better shell. So let's try to get a reverse shell. I'm going to use a PHP one-liner reverse shell command and we can find that in this website pentestmonkey.net reverse shell cheat sheet and from here we can copy this bash command and paste it in shell.sh file. Now we need to change IP address and port number if you want to. So I'm going to use my 10 IP address. That is 10.8.38.30. And leave port 8080 as it is. Now what I'm gonna do is to start my Python HTTP server on port 8000. Next, in burp suite, I'm going to use curl command to connect to my python simple http server where I have hosted my script and pipe its contents to bash which will give me a reverse shell. URL encoded but before sending it to the target, we will start our netcat listener. It says address already in use, so I'm going to change my port to something else in my script. I'm gonna start my simple SUTP server again and start my netcat listener on 1234. And we got a reverse shell. Moving into the home folder, we can see here is a user Lachlan and here is a user.txt file. Now I'm going to use ls-la command to list all the files and the hidden files. And we can see a bash history file in here. And we can see history of commands that were used. The most interesting one is this echo one. This command is changing the password of Lachlan user. 
so that gibberish one was the actual password and this is the way 123 is the new password created by the attacker. Maybe we can use this credential to log in to SSH. I'm going to split my terminal up and type in the SSH command. And the password is this is the way 123 and we are successfully logged in but we are also logged out very quickly. Let's try to log in again. Something weird is going on. We can see it shows a text nope and then we are kicked out. I think some kind of cron job is running which is kicking out the user after some limited time. So let's check out cron tab jobs. As we don't have much time to type that command in the terminal, first we are going to type it in our text editor and then we are going to copy it and paste it in the target. So we can cat cron tab jobs with cat etc cron.d in persistence. Let's clear the screen up and log in again. And paste that command. And we can see something is going on. It's indeed running some job. To understand what's going on, we need to first understand some terms. What is PDS? PDS stands for Pseudo Terminal Slave. It is a terminal which is emulated by another program. For example, SSH. And in the cron job, we can see slash dev slash PDS. So basically, this path contains entries corresponding to devices that are connected to PDS or pseudo terminals. And this is a special directory that is created by the Linux kernel. We can also see this pkill command. This command is used to kill process in Linux. Then we can see dash 9. This is a signal number for the p command and it is used to kill a process. There are different types of signal numbers. And before all these commands, we can also see one more command, slash bin slash sleep. So this is a Linux command which is used to delay something for a specified amount of time. So in short, what this whole command is doing, it's killing the process of the pseudo terminal for the user after some specified amount of time. And this process is being run by the root. Oh yeah, and one more thing, there we can also see this user bin echo command. This command prints nope on the terminal and then it logs you out. And that's what we saw previously. Now we can also notice one more thing. Every command in this cron job has its path provided instead of pkill command. So we can overwrite pkill command to our malicious script and maybe that will give us a reverse shell. So let's try this out. I'm going to use that bash one liner reverse shell command again to get a reverse shell. So I'm going to type this in my text editor first because we don't have much time to type it out in the terminal. This time the port is going to be 4444. Well, as we know, all the executable files are present in the bin directory, so a pkill command is also present in the bin directory. We are basically overwriting pkill contents with our bash one liner reverse shell content. And then we are giving it full permission with plus x. And yeah, this is the final command. Now let's log into that SSH service again. But before typing in the password, I'm going to start my netcat listener on port 4444.
Now paste that command in quickly and now we have a reverse shell with the privileges of the root user. And here we can see the root.txt file. Well, that was a fun CDF challenge. Hope you enjoyed it too. And thank you for watching this video.